What up YouTube, it's your boy Anthony back with another video. Now at the start of the year, I did a video comparing a quick octa to a deep para in terms of light spread. And on that video, I got a comment from one of my subscribers that said, it would be good to see a test with a two base light, like a Godox 8300 or 8600. The speed light is going to be two directional to get the full effect of a deep parabolic. And uh, we went back and forth in the comment and I thought, you know, that is a very good point. And I didn't know if it would make a difference or not. So I told him that I was going to test it out and do a video and here we are. Now I didn't, I don't have an 8300 or an 8600. I do have an 8400, but I didn't feel like lugging that to the parking garage. So we concluded that I was gonna use the AD200 with the bare bulb attachment because for all intent and purposes, that would be good enough to prove the point one way or the other. So I essentially did the same test using the 25 inch quick octa and the 28 inch deep parabolic. I will link to the original video because you probably should watch that one first before you watch this one because unfortunately I don't have the images from that video really to put in this video to do a, a true comparison and I didn't have the time to try to do it with the speed light and the 8200 that it just it takes a lot of time to set all this stuff up and get the images so I don't have all those images to compare so go back look, watch the first video first before you do this one um, so I set it up the same way but I did make a couple differences that I want to point out from the first video the first video I had the speed light set to half power and I just kind of used half power until I had it back to a distance that was uh, I needed to turn it up this time around I actually metered the light so that way I could get it at f56 every single time just to make sure that the light was consistent and in that first video the light was blown out a little bit and I didn't like that so I wanted to be a little bit more consistent this time around also didn't do as many distances because I didn't think that it really mattered and I wanted to keep this a little bit shorter now as I had to say in the first video and it seems like you have to say in every YouTube video otherwise you get you know 10 comments telling you how you're wrong Obviously, this is not scientific. This is not controlled. So this is just meant to give an idea. It is not all inclusive. It is not the say all be all, but it does give you a very good idea. So we're going to jump into the computer. I'm going to show you the examples and then we can conclude. Now, spoiler, I do think there's a little bit of a difference. I don't think that it is a large difference. But in comparing the images using the bare ball versus watching the video and seeing the images of using the speed light, I do think that there is a little bit of a difference in using the bare bulb. And I do think that the deep parabolic is a bit more directional. Again, nothing crazy, but I do think it's noticeable. So let's jump in, look at the images and see if you feel the same. OK, so we're going to start off uh, at two feet. Um, and so as you can see, I have the 25 inch octa on the left, 28 inch deep para on the right. And I started with two feet because in the last video I started with one foot, but one foot is just really close. Uh, so I started with two feet. And so as you can see, if you look at this, now the first thing you can notice is that the light fall off, the gradation from highlight to shadow is smoother with the deep para. And I mentioned this in the first video and it's it's the same now and the reason for that ultimately is just because of the size the deep para is a 16 sided uh, modifier versus the quick octa which is an eight so just the shape of the modifier is more round and i think that helps with this gradation from highlight to shadow where on the quick octa it is a little bit more uh, abrupt isn't a good word but you definitely can see that the the fall off you know going from your highlight into your shadow it's just not as smooth of a transition as it is over here with the deep para and again i think that's simply because of the size of a para a para is typically uh, round in shape where your quick octaves are octagons eight sides so they're not quite as round so if you look at this to my eye I do think that the deep para is a little bit more directional. I think the spread of light is controlled a little bit more on the deep para than it is the octa. You can kind of see up here on this ducting here uh, that the light uh, is hitting it more on the quick octa side than it is on the deep para side. So that kind of 
is the best way to illustrate in this picture that, you know, that spread isn't as large with the deep para. Now, as I mentioned, I don't think it's anything drastic. I, I don't think that there is a huge noticeable difference and I'm not exactly sure how much of a difference you would see in a real world situation. Obviously shooting a cinder block wall uh, in a parking garage is gonna make things noticeable, but would you be able to see this difference in the real world? Maybe, maybe on your background if you have it close. Uh, so let's move to three feet. And again, you can see the same thing. The, the gradation from shadow or from highlight to shadow is softer. You can look up here, you can see that not as much light is hitting the, uh, the ducting. And if you look at this in comparison to the quick octa, it does appear that the deep para is a little bit more focused on the light than the quick octa is. And again, all of these were metered in the same spot on the wall uh, towards the center of the softbox at f5.6. So moving on to four feet, you see the same thing. Um, the deep para does look to be a little bit more directional in that light. The spread is not as wide. The gradation is smoother. So from a background perspective, uh, if your light is, is hitting your background, the deep para would have some benefit. Uh, depending on the look that you're going for, you may want this smoother transition here. You may want this light to be focused a little bit more the way that the deep para is, uh, is doing that. So that is something to keep in mind. I don't know that there would be much of a difference on your subject per se, because the subject, you know, that's going to be such a small portion. Maybe if the subject was filling the frame possibly. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that there is a, a bit of a difference. If we move to five feet, once you get to five feet, uh, you start to see that although that the, the, the characteristics are still the same, the further that it moves from the wall, the less noticeable that it becomes. So here at five feet, I do think that the deep para is still more directional, but it is not nearly as apparent. And I'm able to see it more so because I'm studying the images. And so I'm really looking at, you know, block for block and, and kind of comparing. So I'm able to see it that way, but in a real world situation at five feet, I don't know that the spread would necessarily be different. I do still feel that that gradation from highlight to shadow is much more pleasing with the deep para. And I do think that it is more pleasing from in the deep pair using the bare bulb than it was with the speed light. Um, so I rarely use the bare bulb on the 8200, which I know I should because it's perfect for using it in a softbox, but I just never have, and I never really took the time to see how much of a difference it makes. Um, I do feel like that bare bulb makes a difference and that gradation is smoother using this same modifier with the bare bulb as it was with the speed light. Now, when we get to seven feet, this is where, to me, you're really not seeing any difference. I'm sure that there may still be some to a very marginal degree, but you're just not gonna see it. At this point, even the gradation of light is almost the same. You're not really seeing any difference in terms of the smoothness of that gradation. So once you start to get out here to the seven feet, and if I move to 10 feet, once you're at 10 feet, the light is the light. And at this point, I think you're getting into inverse square law type stuff where it really is just lighting up everything and you're not seeing much of a difference. So let's look at this from a from a different perspective. If we come here, so that's this way you can kind of see more of a over top of each other. So this is the quick uh, the quick octa at two feet and this is the deep para at two feet. So when I toggle these back and forth, you can you can kind of see now on this one here, uh, the light stand kind of seems like it's in a different spot. It's not, it just wasn't squared up, but I did make sure that the modifier itself was perpendicular or parallel to the wall. Um, so you can, you can kind of see it there, two feet, not as noticeable, but if, when I come down here to three feet, so here's the quick octa and here is the deep para, you can see that it, it is a little bit more focused. Again, nothing crazy. It's not a huge difference, but I do think that there is a difference. I am able to see the difference. So if we come to four feet, this is the quick octa. Here's your deep para. 
So again, you can definitely see it if you look up here and even over here, if you look uh, towards the, the shadow ends, you can see where there is uh, there is a difference. And then if we come to five feet, here's quick octa. Here's this. So as I mentioned earlier, once you get out to five feet, it's not quite as noticeable. It is there if you're really, really, really looking hard, but it just isn't as apparent at that point. And then once you get out here to to seven feet uh, at this point, it, there's just not much of a difference. And then 10 feet here just just to do it. So this is 10 feet. So there you have it. My conclusion, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do think there is a difference in using a bare bulb. So if you are going to use a deep para, my recommendation would be to use a bare bulb, whether that's the 8200 with the bare bulb or using the uh, 80. I know the 400 and the 600 have the protruding bulb. I don't know about the 8300. It probably does too, but using something where it has the bulb that allows the light to spread out everywhere. I think you're going to utilize the deep pair best in using that type of uh, style. So very much appreciate the comment that I got on this video that sparked me to want to do this. I do think there's a difference. So there's that. Now, a little odd side note. It was very interesting to see that using the deep para, the deep para was about two thirds stop more efficient on the light output. So again, as I had mentioned, I was metering the light for F5.6 on the wall every shot that I was taking and the deep pair was two thirds stops more efficient. So basically what the, the amount of light that I was using for the quick octa, there was a little bit less light that was needed for the deep pair. So that was cool to see. And for every foot that I moved it off the wall, I increased the flash power by around two thirds stops to keep it at F5.6. So that's just some random useless information uh, for these particular modifiers for every foot. It was about two thirds of a stop to get it back to that exposure point. So there you have it. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, if you haven't seen the first video, go back and watch that one so that this video makes more sense. Um, yeah, so that is all I have for you in this video. Uh, if you're into just me talking about photography type stuff, I have a podcast called the F-16 Photography Podcast. Links are always in the description below. You can go check that out and listen to me talk about stuff. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you have been staying safe, staying healthy, but still getting out there and enjoying the world for what it is. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate your support. Appreciate you watching my videos. Until the next one, you know the drill. Take care. And I have a package that just arrived. <laughs> Take care.